the whole purpose of these different layers is that we have different encapsulation methods at each layer. So when we look at the data that's leaving the sender, right, whether this is, um, I don't know, an email or whether I'm opening up a web browser, whatever the, the data is, before I can start transmitting it, I need to first encapsulate it with a layer four header that just lets you know my my hardware and the upstream devices know what it is that I'm using. So we'll look at some examples of different port numbers. At layer three, we'll have an envelope that has an IP address to and from, all right, source and destination. Think of it like it's an envelope before I pop a card in the mail to my mom. I put her address on there and put my address on there. Same thing with the link layer, all right, or layer two. I'm gonna have a very specific header and on that header, I'm gonna have a source and destination MAC address. So those addresses that are found at each layer, devices that are found at each layer are things that you guys will also have to be pretty comfortable with, all right? So we talked a little bit already about layer one. Um, another thing that we can do at layer one is we as administrators can control what comes in and out of the network by just shutting a port down. So when I shut a port down, that means I'm disabling it at layer one. It's almost like pulling, you know, the breaker on an electrical circuit. So even if somebody were to, you know, plug in a a device on that electrical circuit, they can't transmit any power, all right? So we'll look at this shut and the no shut command a little bit later. Anybody else wanna give me some other examples of things or devices or things that you might have to troubleshoot at layer one? Now, when we start getting into Layer two, ooh, that's a good one, yeah. Patch cables, or patch panels. Yeah, perfect. Um, maybe a bad network card. Um, sometimes you can just tell if the light's blinking or not. Um, we already talked about, yeah, the cable. Sometimes a little pin on the cable like will break off so the cable isn't seated all the way. Right. Um, if your SFP module is faulty, I mean, your cable might still be good, but your SFP, if that's not working, that's layer one also. Good. All right. So at layer two, we call it a frame encapsulation. Our switches focus in on this layer because they can make forwarding decisions based on MAC address. All right. Lots of layer two protocols that we'll see are things like LAN, WAN, um, we'll talk about HDLC and PPP in ICND2, but typically within our local area network, we see Ethernet. Um, there are some other types of Ethernet. The 0x800 is your Ether type for traditional Ethernet, but if you ever look at FCOE, that's going to have a different Ether type. Those you can all see in that layer 2 header. So this is where your Ether type field would be but you have your source and destination address. So when you look at the good old envelope, you know, equivalent or um, uh, analogy, we're always gonna have a source and destination MAC address. All right. Now, for those of you that are familiar with MAC addresses, it's kind of broken up into two parts. Anybody know what that first part is called? Our MACs are 48 bits and their hex values. And they can be represented a couple different ways. So this is all the same MAC address to any network device. It doesn't matter um, necessarily what network device it is that you're using, but they'll be represented slightly different. So if I'm doing like an IP config on a Microsoft machine, it's gonna list the exact same MAC address in a different format than Linux, than Cisco. So if you ever need to copy and paste an address from a Linux machine, you just need to reformat it if you're gonna be doing like a grep or a pipe on Cisco. Yeah, good, so the first half 
is referred to as the organizational unique identifier or the OUI. Yeah, and that'll tell us, hey, is this a, you know, Apple iPhone or a um, Dell laptop or a, you know, insert random vendor. All right, good. Um, next, we'll take a look at the network layer. Now, a lot of these layers we will kind of go back around to and dive into in more detail. Uh, we're really going to spend a lot of time subnetting. Um, just on a scale of one to five, one me having no experience, five, you know how to subnet like the back of your hand. How does everybody feel with subnetting? Because we'll probably be getting into that on Wednesday. But that's really where we're going to kind of break down the whole IP addressing in much more detail. Um, but basically, we have two main flavors of IPs. We have v4 and v6. Most of us are pretty much running v4 at the moment, but you can be running v6 too. That's referred to as being dual stacked. We'll spend a lot of time talking about IPv6 on the last day of class. Um, the IPv6 addresses are 128-bit hex. So when we see something like a slash 64, that's going to tell us, hey, the first half of that address is the network portion. All right, so some of you out are 3, 2.64, <laughs> 4, 1.5, 3, just need a quick refresh. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, what else? Uh, at layer 3, we are going to be um, doing packet encapsulation, so we'll take a look at some of those headers. Um, we are going to be routing based on destination IP. It's also sometimes referred to as packet switching. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the main addressing that we're going to be kind of focusing in on um, are our IP addresses. All right, so this is an example of what our header is going to look like. We're going to be breaking down some of these here in a few minutes. We're probably going to head to break. Um, let me do a quick Wireshark capture before we head to break, and then um, we can kind of play around with Wireshark a little bit whenever, um, whenever we come back from break. So for anybody that hasn't used Wireshark, I definitely recommend you install this or play around with it at some point, maybe not today or tomorrow, but definitely sometime soon. When I go to capture and options, this will show me if I have you know multiple Ethernet um, interfaces. And in this case, I just have one, so I'm going to start my capture on that interface. Now, I'm just gonna run this for literally a couple seconds. I hit start, I hit stop, and in 2.78 seconds, I captured 8,463 packets. It's a lot of traffic. Now, one of the things that we can kind of see is our source and our destination. So I'm just gonna look at some of these guys just to keep it pretty easy. And we'll, you know, kind of dive into TCP and these acknowledgements and all that a little bit later. This top window just kind of allows us to be able to select each individual packet. And all of these little filters up top can be manipulated. But when I kind of open up some of these things down at the bottom, this is what's gonna give us more information at layer two, layer three, layer four. So at layer two, we are running ethernet. That is our ether type. You can see my source is from an ASUS motherboard. You can see my MAC address. Destination also to another ASUS motherboard. You can see that MAC address. So destination, source, and it's like, hey, at layer three, you're gonna be carrying IPv4. So then I open up my layer three header. Let me close my ethernet frame. And then at layer three, you can see I'm running IPv4. You can see my source IP and my destination IP. Um, you can also see the header length. By default, it's 20. You can see my DSCP field has not been changed. Um, that's for quality of service. You can always change your differentiated services and see it reflected there. Um, you can see any flags like the don't fragment or the fragment offset bit. 
Um, usually on Windows machines, our time to live is 128. Every time we traverse a layer three device, that time to live field gets decremented. Um, if we had a header checksum, we can see that listed there. Source, destination, IP. So some of those things are things that we see right here on this particular slide. All right. I think using Wireshark just kind of helps conceptualize and visually see what's happening right now on my network and how does it translate to this good old OSI model.